Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Germany once again for the first time in what feels like a good long while here on the channel. Now, the beer that we're going to have a look at today is quite an interesting one. This is a beer that I've tried before. We actually had it on draft at the Bishop's Arms in Gustav Alves Torre in Malmö. And this was my after shift beer actually while we had it. I really, really enjoyed this one. It's also a style that hasn't featured on the channel all that often but one that I found that I really do quite like actually and we will have a few more examples of this style over the next little while but uh, yeah definitely curious to see how the bottled version compares to the draft version that I've had before and I hope that you guys enjoy learning a, a bit about another kind of unknown so kind of unknown if you like German style of beer so yeah hopefully this beer is as good as I remember it hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one. So, uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to go to a little place called Mart Redwitz, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is in the Oberpfalz region to the northeast of Nuremberg and very close to the Czech border. In English, this area is known as Upper Palatinate. But yeah, as I said, Mart Redwitz is the name of the town. And we're going to have a look at my first beer on the channel from Brauerei Nothaft. So this particular beer is called the Ravitzer Zeugel. It comes in at 5% ABV, and as the name suggests, this one is a Zeugel Lager. So uh, yeah, the Zeugel Lager um, is quite an interesting style. We will talk about that a little bit later on in the video, but just for a wee bit of quickness, I would say that the kind of flavour profile of a Zeugel Lager, it's kind of like a, a Keller beer in a sense, but it does have some of the more kind of multi characteristics of say, you know, a, a Dunkel, like a Munich Dunkel, or maybe even a little touch of Merzen in there as well. So it's kind of like a kind of malty and slightly brown sugary uh, Keller beer in my experience but uh, yeah I think this one should be really nice to do a sit down review of here on the channel so let's crack on and see what we have with this one and definitely nice to introduce the Zoibo laggers to you once again here as well so uh, yeah as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer as I said we'll talk a little bit about the history of the Zoibo as a style as well but if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Brauerei Nothaft. This is the very first time that these guys are appearing on the channel, but hopefully not the last. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support you give is hugely, hugely appreciated. Do make sure you check out the playlist of beers from different countries as well. You will find this one in the German playlist. And of course, the whole channel has a geography-based tagging system. So you can go into the homepage and search for beer from your local county, state, province, prefecture, whatever you like, go into the channel and have a little look at that. But yeah, let's get on to my brewery notes then and we'll talk first off a little bit about Brauerei Nothaft. And I will say there wasn't all that much information available on these guys actually. But um, yeah, Brauerei Nothaft was established back in 1882. And as I mentioned earlier, this brewery can be found in Markt Redwitz in the Oberpfalz region, Upper Palatinate in English, which is to the northeast of Nuremberg in Northern Bavaria, very close to the border with the Czech Republic. Uh, but the founder of this brewery was Otto Nothaft, who first brewed beer on Otto Strasse back in 1882. But by trade, he was actually a butcher, and he was apparently able to build a really modern brewery operation for the times due to the fact that he married into quite a rich family. But his brother Fritz was also uh, a brewer as well. He went on to found the Kaiserhof Brewery in 1898, which would continue to brew apparently until 1993. But over the following uh, over the following years, the brewery basically passed down the generations of the Nothaft family. It struggled a little bit after the Second World War, as many breweries did. The First World War as well, we should point out. But um, it has passed down the generations. So from the original Otto Nothaft, the brewery has been headed by Wilhelm, August, and now it's run by another Otto, along with his successors apparent, Caroline and Andreas. So today, both Otto and Andreas are involved in the brewing. Caroline does more of the kind of business side of things, from what I understand. But according to Untapped, these guys have produced around 20 different kinds of beer. And from what I saw on the website, they are the more kind of traditional, um, you know, Bavarian styles of beer, if you like. So, uh, yeah, quite a few interesting things in there. They've got quite a few different laggers. They've got some Hefeweizens and things like this. So hopefully we can take a look at some of those on the channel at some point in the future. But that was all the information I was really able to find about Blaugai Nothaft. They didn't really have much 
of a kind of brewery history on their website. I searched around for a few articles, used a bit of German and things, but that is really all I could find out about them, unfortunately. But um, yeah, if you want to learn more, again, check out the brewery website. If you're a German speaker, it will help you out quite a little bit. Uh, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with the latest goings on at the brewery. And uh, yeah, hopefully in the future we can add more reviews to, from this brewery and maybe we'll get a little bit more information about them as time goes on. But uh, yeah, let's crack on and have a little look at the beer itself and we'll talk about the Zeugel as a style as well. So I took some notes on the Zeugel style actually. So like I mentioned to you earlier, the Zeugel is a lager beer, so it uses bottom fermenting yeast, low temperature fermentation. Of course, ales on the other hand tend to use top fermenting yeast and a slightly higher temperature fermentation. But the word Zeugel is derived from the German Zeichen, which means sign, or there's also thoughts that it might come from Zeigen, which means show, but uh, it was pronounced uh, Zeigel in the Oberfarts region, and the Zeugel is a pronunciation from a specific town, actually, but the word obviously has evolved over time. So the Zeugel beers were originally brewed in the Kommunbrauweis, so, you know, the communal breweries, if we put it into English, but anyone in these towns who actually had a cellar of sufficient size in their house had the right to use the brewery, and they would ferment the beers themselves in their cellars, having brewed them using the communal brew kit. But when the beer was matured and ready to sell, they would put up... Uh, they would set up their living rooms so that people could come in and drink the beer and then the brewer's star would be placed above the house so that people knew which house it was that they should go to to get their beer. So the brewer's star, you will actually see that on one of the other Zoygos that I have a bottle of later on, but it's kind of like the, the Jewish Star of David, if you like. So one of the triangles in the star is supposed to symbolise uh, fire, water and the the brewer whereas the other three are supposed to symbolize the uh the i think it's the yeast the malt and the hops if i remember correctly i might have one or two of those wrong but it's basically to symbolize something like that so you will see the six point star but this is what was put above people's houses uh, when they had the uh the Zeugel beer ready but apparently um Zeugels were only really found in the Vidishinch back uh, Wiedeschenschensbach, uh, if I pronounced that rightly, Wiedeschenschensbach and Neuhaus towns until about the year 2000. But more brewers have, of course, been brewing this style in recent times. There has been a bit of a legal debate about this, from what I understand, because there are brewers from the original towns where these beers originate that say they want these to have the geographical protection. Basically, brewers from outside this area would not be allowed to use the word Zeugel or the name Zeugel for their beers. But this is quite interesting because this particular example from Blauai Nottaft is not from the area that uh, Zeugels, you know, some of these towns where Zeugels originally originated, if that makes sense. But they have been brewing it since very early in their history. I think this actually, this was one of the first beers that uh, Blauai Nottaft brewed and the recipe was resurrected in the early 90s actually. So uh, yeah, that's definitely worth pointing out when it comes to this one. But um, yeah, that's everything I think we need to say about the Zeugel as a style. I think we can take a little look at the artwork of this one then and get it open. So uh, yeah, as you can see, there is the uh, Zabitzer Zeugel. You can see the brewery's symbol there, the nice kind of eagle and the family, uh, oh no, it's a sort of wheel underneath that. But there you can see um, on the bottle cap, you can see the symbol of the, the Not Taft Brewery is actually quite old school and quite German. You can see 1882 there, so 1882 Jahre. So, uh, yeah, they would say it the other way around, Jahre 1882. But, uh, yeah, this should be quite nice. Half litre bottle, this one cost me 30 Swedish kroner, so that is roughly about 3 euros. Uh, somewhere in the region of like £2.75 sterling, about $3.50 American, something like that. So quite a bit more expensive, I suspect, than you would pay for this beer in Germany. You're probably going to pay like a euro, a euro fifty at most for this one down there. But yeah, like we said earlier, this one is 5% um, ABV. It does actually tell you on the to little top label there, you can see um, it actually tells you it's a Keller beer. And it also tells you the alcohol percentage and things like this. But like I said earlier, for me, a Zeugel is like a a killer beer, but with a bit of a kind of dunkley, Merzen type uh, malty sweetness to it. So uh, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm really curious to see what this is going to have in store for us. 
So nice little bit of smoke on the opening there and we'll get it out and into the glass. So I will point out you can drink this beer in a variety of different glasses. You can of course drink it in uh, a stein. I actually don't have a stein because I did think about doing the review in that one. You can drink it in a sort of taller lager glass as well. But you know I quite like using the tulip glasses because these are these tulip glasses that we have here are the best all-rounders. These things work for pretty much any style and you know I just quite like them. It's one less variable to think about when you're trying lots of different beers. So we have roughly about 75% of the beer out and in the glass at the moment, but that is more than enough to take a look at. So um, yeah, anyway, so before the head disappears, you can see that this beer is poured with about a one third finger of a frothy, I would say kind of cream coloured head, some bigger bubbles just down toward the surface of the liquid, but a few smaller ones sitting on top of that. I'll let you guys just have a wee quick look at that. The camera's gonna focus, there you go. Looks absolutely lovely. But um, yeah, you can see the color of this beer is very, very nice. It has a little bit of a natural haze to it, of course. Uh, they say uh, it's Hefe Trub, which is, you know, yeast. Um, Trub, I think, is kind of like opacity, opaqueness. I don't know the exact translation of that. My German is very rusty. Uh, I only spent about a year there actually in Heidelberg, of course. But um, yeah, the um, the colour of this one is absolutely lovely. As I say, it's got that lovely, very rich amber colour to it. So remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a dark coloured beer. But any barrelation you do or any adjuncts you put in will affect the colour as well. But when it comes to German lagers, you don't really have to care about that all that much. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking to the side of the glass for this one and a steady stream of smaller bubbles just going up toward uh, the bottom of that head there. But overall, it looks very, very nice, I have to say. So um, yeah... Looks, the colour of this one, yeah, that lovely rich amber, it's almost akin to like a an old school West Coast double IPA actually, but you guys know, watching the channel, I'm a bit of a sucker for a nice big malty beer. It's the Scottish sweet tooth, as we say. But yeah, let's take a wee look at the aroma of this one then and see what we have. Oh yeah. Beautiful beer. It smells pretty much exactly as I remember it. And as I say, I'm curious with this one to see how the bottle version compares to the, the draft version. But um, yeah, aroma wise, this is very, very nice. So it's a lovely, you know, you've got that typical big sort of yeasty bready character that you expect of any type of, uh, of Keller beer, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where in the kind of web of different beer styles you would place the Zoigo, but like I say, sm uh, taste profile wise, this one for me is very much like a kind of malty Keller beer in a lot of ways. But yeah backbone of this beer you absolutely get a little bit of that kind of fresh sort of wholemeal brown bread bread crust in there you've got a little touch of that slightly sweet german rye bready character there are some elements of you know a fresh white bread in there as well uh, but it's a as i say it's a beautiful smelling beer uh you know wholemeal bread crust a little touch of rye bread some fresh white bread in there a little bit of um you do get a little touch of an almost cream cracker type note out of this as well. But then on top of all that nice breadiness, I should also point out there's a little slightly woody character to this as well at the front of the nose. But on top of all of that, you do have a lovely kind of, um, you've got a little touch of a, a, a like a biscuity. It reminds me of McVitie's Digestive Biscuits. I honestly can't remember if you get McVitie's Digestive Biscuits in Germany, but yeah, you do get a little bit of that McVitie's digestive biscuit sort of thing out of this one. Uh, on top of that, you have a little touch of a straight up sweet caramel. It's got a little element of toasty character to it, and there's almost a very light honey type touch in there. So yeah, you can smell, you know, almost out toward the edge of the nose if you like. You can smell there's a bit of a more intense caramel in there, a little bit of a kind of slightly toasty one, bit of McVitie's digestive biscuit, and um, yeah, then all of these. Um, yeah, all of these kind of malty notes go together very well. They've got a little element of dryness to them as well, which I think is quite interesting. But yeah, like I say, it's a big, bready and sort of slightly, you know, sweet uh, type Keller beer, this one. So you've got a bit of an oily sweetness in there, but some of the sweetness you get is a little bit um, dry as well, actually. So um, yeah, the way that this, uh, the way that this beer goes together, I think, 
is uh, is really quite nice. It gets a big um, it gets a big thumbs up for me on the malty side of things. Um, do we need to say anything else about it in that way? I don't think so. Uh, on the hoppy side of things, it is pretty much what you'd expect from you know German noble hops. I'm guessing it'll be Hallertau, Mittelfru, or something like that that will be in this beer. Um, so you've got a little bit of a smooth earthiness in there. A um, little touch of herbal character as well. Not too much in the way of floral notes for me, but you do have, there's a little bit of it there. But yeah, the green component for me, smooth earthiness and a kind of wet, freshly cut grass uh, type quality. When it comes to the fruity side of the beer, um, yeah, it's got a little touch of, um, you know, you've got a little bit of that kind of oily, peary sort of thing. There's a little bit of a, you know, sultana, like a dry, white, green, grapey type note. Um, but yeah, oily pear, maybe a teeny tiny little hint of an orange, you know, sapphire, maybe German sapphire, it always gives you a little bit of that slightly orange, you know, that could be one of the hops that's in here. I don't think it's Mandarina Bavaria, you know, some of the higher alpha acid German hops doesn't give you that impression at all. Um, but yeah, a little bit of an oily pear, tiny, tiny little hint of like a fresh green apple, something like that, but yeah, oily pear, a little bit of sultana, maybe a tiny little bit of a... Uh, orange or something like that but it comes out with this really nice um oily yeah it comes out with this really nice oily um fruity character which i think is um is very very nice so um yeah aroma wise this is right up my street uh the aroma as, as i said it compare it's it's pretty much the same that's what we got from the actual uh, from the draft version but the draft version might have been just that little bit more ready i would say so um yeah i think we should have a taste of this one then and see how we get on so um as always my reviews let's just see slange it skull cheers and because it's german prost let's take a look yeah that is pretty damn solid i have to say and yeah, the flavour does pretty much go together as it was in the draft. There's not such a big difference to this one. So yeah, the only thing I would say is that maybe there's a little bit of a yeast <coughs> sediment left in the bottom of the bottle. But yeah, the only thing I would say about it is it's maybe not quite as bready and maybe slightly less smooth in the bottle than it was on the draft. But you know, that quite often tends to be the case. You get that... When it comes to these the, these German beers on draft, they've always just got that little bit more smoothness to them, I would say. But beautiful, beautiful beer. Absolutely, this one. I love a good Zoigo. So if you're watching from the Oberpfalz region, do give me a few recommendations of other Zoigo beers that uh, we should take a look at. So yeah, as I said, for me, the... Flavour profile of this, it is like a big Keller beer, but it just has, maybe saying it's a bit, it was, the maltiness is a bit dunkel like is a bit far, but it does have a little bit of the kind of, it does have a very slight Mertzen type uh, quality to it. It is like a kind of malty, slightly brown sugary leaning Keller beer this, but yeah, beautiful style of beer this. I'm curious to see, uh, we, we reviewed one from uh, MC Wieninger, and we also had, we have also had one from um, Genstaller. Uh, before as well but those are not um, actually from the towns that were famous for this style of course whereas these guys are from uh, not even from the region actually but um, these guys are from that region where the beer is where this style is native um, so yeah but beautiful beer this one if you get the chance to try this do go for it it hasn't sold too much in c Stempolag it, but you know have a taste of it and just see what you think because so it's an unknown style and it really is nicely done but let's break this down and describe it a wee bit more in depth for you as we always do so middle third of your palate then you can feel the backbone of the beer you do get a little bit of that kind of fresh, you've got a little bit of that, um, you know, fresh, wholemealy, rye bread sort of bread crust, and you can feel it almost feels a little bit dry in that sense, like you've still got the flour kind of on the bread crust there, so definitely getting that in the backbone. 
husk of the beer. If you move toward the front of that middle third of your palate, mixed in with that bread crust, you'll get a little touch of, uh, you will get a little touch of woodiness out of this one. But um, yeah, that does go together really nicely in that, in that way. So yeah, toward, yeah, toward the front of that middle third of the palate, there's that lovely little bit of woodiness there. And to me, that lingers into the aftertaste. Um, but yeah, it is lovely. So yeah, on top of that kind of bread crusty layer, you've got a bit of the, you do have a bit of that kind of rye bread. You can feel from the dryness and the sort of graininess uh, of the bready characters in there that it, it does feel a little bit like a, a rye bread. But of course, these beers do not contain rye malt. Let's not... Uh, Kind of go down that rabbit hole that is barley malt but yeah um you do get a little bit of that almost kind of rye bready flavor and on top of that there's a bit more of a kind of slightly lighter wholemeal brown bread and then you can feel the further up you go it's a very layered beer this one in terms of its flavor so you get the bread crust a sort of rye bready you know a slightly more wholemeal brown bread and then a lovely smooth white bready character so yeah the way that that goes together i think is uh, is very very nice So yeah, um, the way that that goes together, I think, is um, the way that that goes together is nice. But then it forms a really nice base of the beer, and then yeah, on top of that, you've kind of got the the bread almost forms like a bowl in the middle of your palate, and then you just get the brown sugars kind of sitting in the middle of that. So in the dead center, in the dead center, of your palate, you've got a little bit of a more kind of oily, caramelly note which I think is quite nice. So you've got that lovely oily caramelly note. And then as you go further out from that, you get a little bit of a kind of biscuity sort of thing, but you've almost got a little, the, the brown bready notes with in the, in the base layer of that sort of bowl I was talking about, you've almost got this slightly leathery brown sugary character. And normally when you're talking about leathery brown sugary notes, that comes from a slightly longer wort oil but yeah you actually do get quite a little bit of a dry leathery character out of the brown sugars here um in the middle of your palate as i see you've got the oily sweet caramel and then outside of that you've got a bit of a mcvitie's digestive uh, biscuity sort of thing so yeah i do again i do like how this goes together in that sense so um yeah the way that that beer that the beer goes together in that particular regard, I think, is really nice, and like I say, it gets a big, yeah, it does get a big thumbs up from me. Um, yeah. So on the um, other than that, I don't think we really need to say so much about the middle third of your palate with this one. The only other thing I would say is that as you go further back on the palate in this beer, you know, into the back third of the palate, you get a lot more kind of dryness and graininess out of the beer, which is interesting. So the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of that bready build-up there, and it is more of a, yeah, it is definitely more of a kind of whole mealy brown bready sort of thing. But yeah, the base of that, um, the base of that back third of your palate, the brown, the, the, the bread crusty character is a lot drier, and it's a lot more, um, yeah, it's a lot drier, and it's just, it's just got a lot more of that kind of greenness to it, which I do like. On top of that, you can feel the layers of bread are that little bit more dense and a little bit taller. So yeah, you get the rye bread layer again, more grainy. You get the brown bready, wholemeal kind of bread layer. Then you get a more airy, uh, white bready layer. And on top of all of that, uh, some of the brown sugars actually just spread into the back third of the palate and sit on top of that. But then above all of that, you've got a more airy, yeasty character in there. And it's actually like a sort of sweet bread that's almost been like soaked in a little bit of brandy or something it's got a very sweet bready yeasty kind of character this one um but yeah definitely on the back third of the palate you can feel the flavor is taller then as you come further forward into the middle third of the palate everything just condenses down and you get all those flavors we just talked about a minute or two ago but yeah the malty and yeasty side of this beer is really nice and it certainly has that big smoothness that you would expect of any type of a uh, of sort of German killer lager or killer beer, whatever we want to call it. But um, yeah, it goes together really nice. I don't know if this one, as I say, I don't know if this one is quite as smooth and quite as thick in those yeasty and bready characters as we've had from uh, this beer on draft. But 
you know, I always find that bottled and canned versions of beers are not quite as thick and smooth as their as their keg counterparts, should we say. But yeah, let's focus on the um, hoppy side of the beer then. Uh, and this is actually quite similar to what we were picking up in the, the aroma as well. So back corners on the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there. And the earthiness actually does give you a little touch of bitterness to the beer. And that kind of builds a good bridge with all of the um, kind of bread crusty notes that you're getting out of the beer as well. It actually does, the earthiness and the kind of malty dryness in this beer work quite well together. But as you move further forward and on the sides of your palate there, you get a little bit of a herbal character. And as you push forward towards the kind of front corners of the palate, you've got a little bit of that floral uh, aromaticity coming out of the beer. Then round the front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy. So see, the grassiness has a wee touch of zestiness to it, but like I said from the aroma, it's quite a wet, you know, freshly cut grass type thing. But yeah, a little touch of floral note there, but the green component is... Um, it's very nice. So yeah, gets a thumbs up from me. So on the um yeah, on the fruity side of things with this beer then, uh, front third of your palate. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again you get a little bit of that brown bready build up there, the base of the front third of your palate, you've got a nice kind of smooth woodiness to it, but again it's more it's more of a home meal brown bready character then on top of that you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer and again it's the fruity side of this beer is, is what I remember as well so toward the back of that um kind of the, the back of that front third of your palate you do have a little bit of that kind of sultana you know the dry white green grapey character and there's a little bit of an almost slightly dry datey note as well But then, yeah, as you move further forward from that, you get a slightly more oily pear. Yeah, definitely a more kind of oily peary character coming out of this one. And then, yeah, as you reach the kind of front edge of the tongue, you know, there's a little tiny touch of a fresh green apple, but not a lot for me. Yeah, it's more an oily pear, sultana and slightly datey character that you're getting from this one. But the fruity notes are nice and oily. They've got a nice, the sort of dry fruity character that you get out of this one. It is in keeping with the sort of slightly more malty, almost mercenary type brown sugar that you're getting out of this beer but um yeah i think this one is really really very nice i enjoyed this beer when we had it on draft and uh, i've enjoyed the bottle version of it as well needless to say um i think we can round off this review with a wee look at the mouthfeel so for me it's still a fairly light bodied beer it's kind of top end of light bodied bottom end of mid bodied carbonation is very smooth in this one um i would say you know a little bit of a wetter mouthfeel but at the same time it's quite smooth in terms of uh, the hoppy, in terms of hoppy side of the beer, um, I would say this one's, I think this is a fairly standard sort of 20, 25 IBU, if that, I think 20 is more likely to be honest with you. You do get a little bit of bitterness from the earthiness and you've also got a wee touch of graininess in there as well. But like we said, a bit of dryness from the malt base, it's very smooth in the middle, there's a bit of sweetness on top and a little bit of leatheriness there too. Then the fruity side of it is a little bit more kind of oily but I think the way that everything goes together in this beer is actually uh, is very very nice and it gets a big thumbs up from me so um yeah I think we can leave it at that for this particular review um so yeah I've really enjoyed trying this one actually the Ravitzer Zeugel so um yeah this one was the Ravitzer Zeugel from Brauerei Notaf in Mark Redwitz uh, do we start the right to say it? Mark Redwitz in the Oberfalz region in Germany. The first Zeugel review on the channel in a long time, but we do have another Zeugel that we'll look at uh, sometime quite soon, actually. I want to try and get that while it's still fairly fresh. But uh, yeah, cool to introduce this style to you once again on the channel and give me some more recommendations for this particular style if you're watching from the Oberfalz region. It would be cool to try and get a hold of some of those. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know your favourite beers from Brauerei Nothaf and Mar uh, Martha Redwitz as well. I apologise for my bad German pronunciations in this video. But yeah, always great to hear from you guys. Check out my social media, check out theirs, and I'll see you guys in the next review. The uh, Ravitzer Zeuger 
five percenter, beautiful beer this one, a style that I definitely want to explore more here on the channel. Slanget, Skull and cheers.